Thank you, Rue. Thank you. We are actually going to move into the last little part of our panel. I'm going to welcome um, Honors College Dean Adams here to say a few words, and then we will welcome President Castro. Last question. You're obviously all awesome people. <laughs> and, uh, fascinating, interesting, informative, inspiring, uh, wonderful panel. We really appreciate it. And thanks also to, to uh, Dr. Basu and Lauren, and all the Laurens. <laughs> Uh, for uh, putting on, and the whole team at ONS and in the Honors College, for putting on a really, really wonderful event. <coughs> I've been trans transformed um, through the through the experience, listening to these uh, wonderful stories, and it's been a wonderful um, afternoon. Thank you all, too, for coming. Um, USF has a great record uh, with regard to the Fulbright program, but you, the students and faculty who have come for information and inspiration, you are the future of uh, USF's uh, record with the Fulbright program, and so we look to you. Uh, to continue um, our record with the help of the ONS staff. Uh, it's been very inspiring for me uh, to listen to these uh, stories today because 30 years ago this fall, I began my year as a Fulbright professor in Germany. I was Fulbright professor of American studies at the University of Bonn in what was then West Germany. That's a long time ago. Uh, but it was the one of the most, uh, if not the most, important light year of my professional and personal life. Um, the experiences of that year have stayed with me. Um, to this very day, um, just this past month, I finished a, a translation of a German novel with a uh, German colleague who is a good friend and whom I met uh, 30 years ago in Germany. So that's, that's a lifelong um, relationship with, um, with my German friend and with my Fulbright experience. So it has that kind of effect on each and every one of you. I was amused, though, with the story about your, when you mentioned the hierarchical nature of, of German academics. I remember walking into the office of the English department uh, on the first day, and I walked in, and the secretary behind the desk stood up and said, Herr Dr. Professor Adams. Said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Slow down. We have to have a different relationship than that. But um, it was a great, great year, and a very, very transformative year. It's my pleasure right now to introduce our featured speaker, our capstone um, of our panel this afternoon, uh, a remarkable woman, and one of Florida's uh, preeminent public servants. Um, and a great, great friend, obviously, of the, the Fulbright program, Betty Castor. Um, Betty Castor has served in a number of capacities throughout the year. She's been a Hillsborough County Commissioner. Um, she's been in the Florida Senate. Um, she's been in the Florida Cabinet. Um, most relevant to USF, all USF, all Bulls. Um, she was president of this institution for five years, I believe. Six years. Six years, sorry. Um, six years. Um, and for that, we are very, very grateful. She, her global vision um, has, has a lot to do. Uh, with the character of this university and the global perspective that this university has, and for that we're very, very uh, grateful. Uh, most relevant to this event today, though, she served for uh, for two years as the chair of the um, Fulbright Scholarship Board, um, the governing authority for the Fulbright um, program. And so she knows uh, this program from various angles, but has uh, been right to the top of the program. So we're looking forward to her comments today. President Castor. I was uh, just delighted to hear uh, all of your comments because my recent experience with the Fulbright is at this level. Uh, I was uh, on the uh, Fulbright board for six years, for two terms, and served as chair, as Chuck mentioned. And uh, during that uh, period, I interacted with um, a lot of folks at IIB. Heather, thank you for being here. We've exported not only Fulbrighters. Uh, I know if you're from uh, Houston and from Rice, and that's a great place. And we exported our former provost to the University of Houston, where she was president, <laughs> Renu Couture. And she started as my faculty assistant, so we uh, we are watching her very very carefully. But thanks for being here. Um, I I just want to echo everything you've said. As a member of the Fulbright board, and from this level. What we did, there were 12 members. Most of the time I was on the board, there were not that many. But all of those final applications came to the board where we did the rubber stamp. We did read uh, applications. We divided them. And we were kind of specialists for countries or for parts of, uh, parts of the world. I was not a Fulbrighter myself. But I did start my career teaching in East Africa. And I just found your uh, 
all of your comments about language to be very humorous because when I applied to the Teachers for East Africa program over 50 years ago and was accepted to go to Uganda, we went to Columbia University, forget this, eight weeks to learn Swahili. <laughs> when I landed in Kampala, Uganda, the language was Luganda, <laughs> not Swahili. But we did that dance, and everyone said, speak English, speak English, you know. And it would, going from Swahili and Luganda uh, with ease in speaking English, because we taught in English, was a lot easier. And when, even when we were out and tried uh, to get along, in the markets and in our travel and everything else, people would just shake their heads, <laughs> you know, trying to get this Swahili swang. Uh, it never really, uh, it never really did work for me. Although there are a few phrases that I sometimes use now with younger, with younger students, but um, the emphasis that you place on uh, the application itself, I think, is very, very important. I read for some countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, the applications would come and they were all available to us online and we would download them and read them and uh, give the final approval. This is after they went through several tiers of uh, readers for us. Uh, and I also read for the hemisphere. And I would say to those who are interested in the Fulbright program, Generally, uh, the countries represented here today are pretty competitive. I found applications in the hemisphere uh, to be, there weren't as many applicants. And I think one thing that's important is for the program, and Lauren knows this, trying to get people to apply for some of those countries where there are not as many. Germany is very uh, even Spain is, uh, is pretty uh, competitive now, but some of those South American countries are not quite as competitive. Some of the Sub-Saharan countries are not as competitive, but the programs are not as large, so you have to be careful. And you have to be a little bit flexible because in our experience, sometimes, uh, sometimes applicants uh, say, I can't go. Uh, or we'll have uh, an opening in Jordan, and you were going to go to Egypt. You're so disappointed. Will you go to Jordan? The answer is yes. Uh, you should. Uh, so I think there is this little bit of um, the applications don't have to be perfect, uh, and you should be flexible because sometimes you can. Sometimes there's uh, there's some mobility. But the idea of looking at how, how one can connect with a country um, is really important and it's unusual. Of all those applications that I looked at, no two were ever the same. Everybody has some individual, some real uh, interest, some way to hit a home run, and the worst thing you can do is not be accepted. Oh, that's just a shame. Because you can go on to other things. The application process itself for Fulbright is an education. And there are other scholarships available. And if you don't get an, uh, a scholarship, you can, you can move away for a while and go and seek your fortune in one of these countries, so to speak. You can get somewhere abroad. And you can attach yourself to an educational institution, uh, and, and that's a good part. So Fulbright is good, it's important, it is, um, in my estimation, the premier uh, scholarship uh, program for, uh, for students. The ETA program is the one that is growing the most. And when I first, from the time I first went on the board until last year, the ETA program had grown by leaps and bounds. The, the reason for that is very simple. People want English teachers all over the world. And um, 
Darling, you weren't in, were you an ETA? No, you were an no, early child educator. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the biggest program. Uh, it is, uh, it's marvelous to know um, how successful USF has been with the Fulbright program at the student level and at the faculty level. And yes, I, I think the institution should brag. <laughs>